we are in Spirit Vine Retreat Center in Brazil. We are located in the state of Bahia in the Atlantic Rainforest. Our center is only minutes away from the most beautiful beaches. We are now with three participants from the May 2018 retreat. Jacqueline, an event organizer from US, Florence, a yoga teacher from Switzerland, and Sandra, a dance therapist from US. What did you learn? What is the most important did you learn in these days? Well, I learned that I can um, grow and get past some of the major stumbling blocks that I've had in my lifetime, which um, have caused physical manifestations, have caused problems with my throat, and, and kept me back from being the, the best person that I could be. And um, I, I think through going through the experience of ayahuasca, um, I was forced to uh, examine the, the things that terrified me from my youth. What was the technique that helped you most during this retreat? Um, actually, it was the understanding what it was that I was going through by going through the workshops and understanding uh, why these things were possibly affecting me the way they were. Um, like if I just went through the journey alone, I would have been very scared and not known at all what to do with what I was seeing, other than maybe that would just reinforce my being frightened. Can and you give me an example? Uh, which workshop and what did you realize? Okay, um, for me, there, well, I think all of the workshops were very helpful. But for me, understanding that it was actually um, having to heal the child in order to be able to move forward, that was the most important piece that I got from the workshops because um, I wouldn't have really understood. I would never have tied them together if I would have just done ayahuasca alone. I would have only have had a uncomfortable experience and not known what to do with it. But after going to the workshops, I realized that pain was from uh, my inner child, and that inner child really needed to have compassion and really needed to be loved. And I think I spent my time trying to avoid the child and avoid the pain. So um, for me, it's been a fantastic journey, and it's going to continue. From here on out. So the most powerful was to learn that uh, not to avoid your inner child. Exactly. Instead of facing and heal what you needed to transform. Exactly. You really needed to step up and, and stop avoiding the situations that make you uncomfortable and also um, really listen to your child. You know, um, before I never listened to her at all. Yeah, just, es escaping your child, you were prolonging the agony. Exactly, and running into the same loops over mm -hmm. and over and over again to mm -hmm. the same problem. So this was very, very helpful for me. Thank you. I learned that I needed to come into my body. And when, this, uh, when we did the workshop where we should scan our body for possible pain or blockages, that was the first moment in a long time in this life where I started to ask my body again if it feels and what it feels and it was such a, a helpful tool because during the ceremonies when ev everything was amplified I could work with that tool and I could really fully come into my body again and so much Things were revealed to me that I was finally able to embrace my shadows again and see a lot of patterns and a lot of things of my inner child which I, which I kept repressing and the most powerful was that I, I was like always suppressing my power, I was afraid of my power and yeah, I feel completely in my body again and very powerful and I'm very happy about that. I consider myself to be a very self-aware person, um, but what this retreat and ayahuasca and um, all of the, the tools that we got here did for me is it showed me, it really amplified my patterns um, and 
what I needed to learn is how to let go um, and to, to I, it showed me that my um, behaviors are more than just behaviors. My behaviors were turning into my identity, um, my identity of worrying. Um, so it really highlighted this. And then in addition, um, I got information about a past life that gave me um, a lot of insight as to why it's been such a struggle to use my voice. I would never probably volunteer to be videotaped in the past. Um, so this is a step for me to be videotaped, <laughs> um, to use my voice and to use my power. So this is a huge step for me. Um, and being able to see how um, ayahuasca amplified, how my behavior and my patterns um, are affecting people close to me, my son, my dog. I got to see through their eyes. I got to see how my behavior um, and my way of being in the world isolates my, both myself and them. So I'm really looking forward to um, using the work in my, um, in my real, you know, my, my, my daily life. Which workshop was more productive for you? Um, I think the first workshop really was the one that I take, I, I, I mean, the second one gave me lots of insight as to why I am the way I am. The second one was, uh, was, was the past life where mm -hmm. I, I saw why it's so hard for me to use my voice, um, healing my inner child. That was a surprise that, um, there was more information than just in this life. Um, but the first that tied into the first workshop, which is how I live my life on a daily basis and how I try to retreat into my mind and to control things that are beyond my control instead of just being present. So that's where I feel like she, she showed me where the real work is for me in my in my daily life. So it was difficult to go and see a past life. Uh, it was both difficult and scary, but also it was a huge relief in some ways because what I saw um, was someone who literally lost their voice. Um, so that really showed me that what I'm carrying is not just from one lifetime and that what's in my body is not just from this birth to where I am today. So it gave me a huge insight. Um, so while it was difficult to be in the, the vision, it illuminated what, and, and the combination of my upbringing now, why it's been so difficult for me to use my voice and feel safe using my voice. So I would say it was a gift, um, a, although a difficult one to be inside of mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, scary, but illuminating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, can be productive for somebody to drink ayahuasca alone or just to do one ceremony? I would say no. Um, I think it would be more damaging to do it by yourself. Um, I know I was having a hard time in the middle of my trip and having the support from both yourself and Rohan was extraordinarily important. I, um, I would not have done well at all without having that support and that help and also the reassurance that everything is going to be okay too. <laughs> and what about this? Because I have a lot of people asking, can I have only one ceremony, two ceremonies? What do you think now about that? No, because the first time um, I took ayahuasca, I was a little intimidated by it. And if I'd only taken it the once and not gone through the workshops and continued again, I would never have the presence of mind to slow down and listen and see and fully understand what it was that I was seeing. Or because probably you will not drink again anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would do it again. I would definitely come back for another workshop because I think um, it's, it's like an onion and you keep pulling apart the layers and, and each time you make it through another layer there's more understanding. And the, that understanding only helps you along your path and, and grow. It really helps you grow to be the best person you can be. And that's ultimately what I'm trying to be, is the very best I can be. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody that is considering doing ayahuasca for the first time? Come to Spirit Wines. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel it's really like we've got the best 
possible setting and assistance and guidance here starting with the diet um, being in a group not being alone feeling connected it feels like a family now it's very beautiful mm -hmm. and it's beautiful to share and it's a beautiful environment in the jungle everything is like with so much love and yeah it was was one of the best experience if not the best experience of my life so far i guess i would just say i i do emphasize at least for myself that i think the real work is like in your in your life like how you use the tools how you how you listen to what she told you because it would be very easy I think to slip back into old patterns so um, for me my work is going to be keeping this vibration um, and being really aware of her inside of mm. me um, as I as I move day to day like waking up and reminding myself and actively being conscious because I could see, and, and I think people automatically want, who know you, want to pull you back into your old self because that's where they feel comfortable. So the work is being the person with these insights and doing the work when you get home. So to apply all these techniques in your mm -hmm. everyday life mm -hmm. and to be awake as much as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. To own yourself. Yes. Yeah, own yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody, it was a pleasure to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You.